There we go. Okay. It's working now? Yep. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, I'm gonna do a quick intro again. Sorry about that. Um, I had to remember to record this for folks who aren't able to join us this afternoon. Again, my name's Donna. I'm with Quatch with the College Success Foundation and the Washington Passport Network. Um, we have a webinar this afternoon for all of you, um, part of the Washington Passport Network. The webinar is about a funding opportunity that will be administered through an organization called Together We Rise. Um, and we have a couple of guest speakers with us this afternoon to talk more about the um, funding opportunity, how your agency can apply to be a referral agency for a student who is interested in applying for these funds, um, and just the process. And again, this um, webinar will be recorded and posted on the Washington Passport Network website later this week. All right, Don, I'm going to hand it off to you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Don Cipriano McCafferty. And um, I'm really glad that you're able to join us today um, to learn about this brand new source of rapid response emergency funding for the students that we all support. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera off right now so that we can get through this quickly and then we'll go over some housekeeping items. So um, this training should take about an hour, maybe a little bit less. And as a reminder, you're muted um, to help reduce background noise. If you have a question, we ask that you enter it into the question and ask, uh, question and answer function uh, at the bottom of your screen. Donna has graciously agreed to monitor the questions coming in and we will pause throughout the presentation to answer some questions. But um, I did wanna let you know that if we run out of time, we will contact you directly with the answer to your question. Like Donna had mentioned, this training is being recorded. Uh, the presentation slides, a frequently asked questions document, and the recording will be available on the Washington Passport Network um, website uh, in the future. Oh, next slide. Again, I'm Don Cipriano McCafferty, the Assistant Director to the Passport to Careers Program uh, in Washington State. Today, I'm going to be joined uh, by Mario Gonzalez from Together We Rise. Gianna Dahlia is also the Executive Director, and unfortunately, she was not able to, to um, join us today. So what, what, will, we, what will we be sharing um, with you? It's basically what this new source of emergency, emergent funding for foster youth is, uh, who will be eligible for the resources, how to become a referral agency or institution, and how, inst how students can apply for the funds. Um, and then you can also, Mario's gonna talk about what to expect from the support process for students. All right, next slide. Now it's also important to acknowledge that this resource would not be available without a funder. Um, I'd like to thank the Stewart Foundation for providing the funding for this service to students. The Stewart Foundation has supported foster youth education in Washington for a couple of decades, and the foundation decided to take action after seeing how the COVID-19 pandemic was impacting um, transition age foster youth. And this was after speaking with some post-secondary institutions. So this opportunity would not be possible without them. Um, I'm also gonna add a shameless plug here. If you have any connections with other organizations and you think they, they could be interested in partnering with the Stewart Foundation, to increase the support to foster youth, please let me know and I'll get you connected to Alexia Everett who has um, really been the person spearheading this effort. So in Washington State, the Stewart Foundation has, has designated or reserved $100,000 available uh, to students on a first come first serve basis. The Stewart Foundation found that students in emergency situations need their crisis addressed immediately. Um, however, through interviews with campuses, they learned that it can sometimes take a little bit of time to get that money to students. And this is not surprising to most of us. You know, there's, there's always a process to get these, this funds to, the funds to students. Um, so between passport support services and the amazing work that our non-governmental partners are doing, we are lucky to have a strong infrastructure in Washington State. I wanted to make clear that this is a partnership uh, to the service infrastructure we already have in place in Washington. Um, this resource does not replace the support services provided through passport incentive grant funds, 
or the College Success Foundation Scholar Success Fund. This simply helps supplement what we already have in place. Um, as you know, passport funds are limited to passport eligible students only, and um, the incentive grant funds are going to institutions that have viable plans in place. Now, that's limited because if you only have five students in play, you know, at, on your campus, then you're only going to receive funding for those five students. Um, and then the College Success Scholar Success Fund, um, those funds do expire at the end of June. And so, so this is really sweeping in and coming, um, coming up and, and, and helping students, students in addition to what is already in place. So Together We Rise is helping coordinate the last dollar in rapid response help to students. Um, and you know, I just, I like this visual because it puts a student at the center of their supportive adults. Together, you know, we're working together, we can get students through this um, outbreak. Next slide. So as I mentioned earlier, the Washington Passport Network has established the needed infrastructure to reduce barriers to students and for helping them get through, um, for helping them get through to Together We Rise. So there are three basic steps to help to getting help to our students. Um, step one is that the organization, organization serving foster youth and post-secondary support programs for foster youth, um, such as those institutions with a viable plan, like I mentioned, um, they apply to be an authorized referrer. Step two is once your institution or organization is an authorized referrer, you may send students directly to Together We Rise. And then in step three, Together We Rise will ask the student to complete a simple application. It really isn't very complicated and provides the needed assistance to students. And Mario is gonna go ahead and talk about, um, talk about that a little bit more later. This slide provides a basic overview of eligibility for Together We Rise services. Um, this, is, this is also where you strip away everything you have learned about passport eligibility um, it's less restrictive than what you have been accustomed through accustomed to through Passport. So first of all, this is open to current or former foster youth residing in Washington State. There is no age restriction here. So those students who have aged out of Passport are also eligible for it. Um, they must be a current college student or graduating from a high graduating from a high or a graduating high school senior, enrolling in either summer or fall term. Uh, if you're at a post-secondary institution, you do not need to be participating in the Passport Viable Plan. Students do not need to be active participants in campus support programs. Uh, students must be facing a challenge that threatens to disrupt their post-secondary success and not have access to other resources to help them address a student's immediate need. Students are not able to self-refer. They must be referred by an approved agency or college. And this is not available to unaccompanied homeless youth. Unfortunately, um, they do not qualify for it. But I did want to note that there is a similar support program through um, building a program called Building Changes. And I'll ask Donna to post a link to um, the Building Changes support website on the WPN website as well. So just a quick note, this program is designed to give adults flexibility and discretion but the onus lies on the referring organization or institution to use that discretion. Um, referring organizations are asked to email Together We Rise with questions regarding unique situations for students. Don, we do have a few questions about eligibility. Okay. Do you want to save that for the end or? Um, let's wait for, tra well, actually go ahead. Let's, let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so first question is once referrers are approved, can any case manager complete the referrals? Yes, they can. Yes. Good. And then the next question is, is there a requirement for time and care? No, there is no requirement for time and care. Thank you. So this slide just provides some information about eligible referral agencies. Um, so of course, college campus uh, foster youth support programs can be a referring agency. Um, even, I'm, I'm guessing even high schools could be considered a referring agency if they do have a support program or for those um, 
the McKinney Vento liaisons, or uh, not McKinney Vento, sorry, apologize for that. The um, foster care liaisons, my goodness. Oftentimes there's an overlap there. <laughs> uh, so a nonprofit organization serving the eligible student population may also be, be apply to be a referrer. And they must be able to verify that the student meets eligibility criteria. But Together We Rise will not be doing student eligibility verification on their end. They are trusting you to send them only eligible students. And we're hoping that this helps eliminate hurdles for the student. You know, every single time they have to provide documentation of their foster care status, it does create barriers and it does create a delay in getting them the support that they need. Um, and then the, the last thing is that organizations must be located in Washington State. So here on the slide, you can see it says complete a referral application form. When you receive the PDF um, of this presentation, this does link to the form that you need to complete. And it is, it is a Google Doc. OK, next slide. Um, as I mentioned on the previous slide, if your organization or institution is interested in participating, you will need to complete a referral application, which will be shared after this webinar. So it's, it's going to be up on the website, on WPN. Um, we ask that you please, please coordinate with your institution or organization because only one referral application should be submitted. So this is, uh, this is the referral application for the organization itself, not for the student. So like the question that came in earlier about, you know, different case managers referring students. Yes, absolutely, you may do that. Um, as a reminder, the, the funds are first come, first serve. Please use discretion in who you will be referring to Together We Rise. Be judicious about what an emergency is. Um, also, because I know it can happen, please do not batch and prioritize student applications because they're experiencing a crisis and we want to address it quickly. Um, and then just talking about emergency situations. So if you have a student that needs three months of help with rent, um, that's not really considered emergent situation just because that's more of a chronic issue that the student is, is needing to address. Um, and there might be other resources available to them. But if they're in your office and they're crying because they have no groceries or their power's about to get cut off or, or whatever it is, you know, definitely refer them um, after looking in the community for other resources that might be available to them. But yeah, those students could, could be referred. Donna, did we receive another question? Yes, we do have one more. Um, oh, actually two more. So one is how does referring agency rule out that other public and private resources are not available to the student? Okay, so you will have to be working with um, other resources. So if you're in your community and you know what is available to them, um, you, you would need to be working with them to see if the student is um, able to, re first of all, the student comes to you, you can see if, you can check to see if you can refer that student to that other organization first. Um, and it's going to de depend on their need, but you really do need to be checking, um, you know, working with the DSS, working with um, organizations like Safety Net in Spokane, um, seeing if they can provide the student with the service before um, reaching out to Together We Rise. Thanks, Don. Uh, two more questions, um, and I believe this will be covered later on as well. Um, okay. What is considered emergency? If there are examples that we can provide. Yeah, so, I mean, there's quite a bit, and, and, and I think Mario is going to be talking about it a little bit later. You know, he, um, mm -hmm. so maybe we can maybe put this question off until a little bit later. But um, yeah, if a student is in, in a crisis mode, please, you know, have them do the referral or have them do the application for the support. Mm -hmm. And then two more, um, which I also believe is covered later. Um, do students have to be enrolled at least half time or? Nope, they do not. There is no, um, no qualifier. So again, strip okay. away the passport, the knowledge that you have on passport. And this is completely different. If a, a student can be attending, you know, one class and they, they can be eligible. Great. Um, and two more. Um, one, sorry, I'm just trying to, okay, so someone's just trying to clarify when we say one form per agency, so for, so for multiple campuses, 
Is that one form that they would complete? Um, is this in, in, and I just need to clarify, is this in reference to like the branch campuses? Um, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. I can ask. You know, I would, I would probably coordinate on that. And I know that can be a little bit difficult. So um, maybe reach out to me if it's if it's a challenge if it's something that is difficult then then just go ahead and reach out to me and we'll we'll work through that okay yep that person said yes so and they can reach out to you after um and then last one that i'm seeing right now is um what is the order of priority for referring to support services for example incentive grant funds versus passport scholar success fund versus together we rise funds. okay so First, you would use, you know, access the funds that you already have on campus through incentive grant funds. And there is no order to this. But, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that you would first access incentive grant funds and then the CSF scholar success fund or scholar. Am I saying that right, Donna? Scholar success funds? <laughs> yes, right now. <laughs> um, then you would go to them because that is also an, a, a, an emergency fund as well. And then after, after those things, then you would access funds from Together We Rise. Great. That's all I'm seeing right now. So I'm going to go to the next slide. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I was going to pause. Oh, wait, wait a second. <laughs> go back one, Donna. All right, we're good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and transition over to Mario now. Thanks everyone. Hello everyone, my name is Mario Gonzalez. I am the uh, Family Fellowship Scholarship Coordinator for Together We Rise, as well as the Rapid Response Manager for this initiative. And we'll jump right into it. Well, we have, um, we're gonna review kind of the, where we started and, and how all this COVID response happened and then jump right into our Rapid Response Program. And then towards the end, we'll have a, a more Q&A available. So let's, let's go to the next slide. Uh, we wanted to start off by giving everybody kind of an understanding of what Together We Rise is and what we've done. Uh, Together We Rise is a nonprofit organization, and we've been providing services now for about 11 years to youth in foster care through California. Through It started in California. It's now become a national program, so we've provided services all across the country. Um, as I've mentioned, we did have a scholarship, uh, the, the Family Fellowship Scholarship, and that scholarship was, uh, was provided to youth all across the country to go to school, go to college, and continue their education while eliminating a lot of the barriers, for example, housing, tuition costs, et cetera. Um, and through that, through that uh, fellowship that we've been developing, we started noticing a lot of the issues when COVID was beginning to build up. We noticed a lot of the services that the youth were, were in need of were taken care of through our fellowship, but then we began to hear a lot of other stories of individuals who did not have a place to stay, who were getting those emails from the college campuses saying, hey, cop, uh, campus is closed, your dorms are closed. And our students, you know, they started freaking out. They had questions like, where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? They're closing my campus. I don't know where to go. And so that led us into a little bit more digging and finding out a little bit more about what was really happening and uh, addressing the needs that were coming up through COVID. So if you can go on to the next slide, we'll, um, we'll discuss the, uh, the rapid response initiative. So as of March 16th, we've expanded our services from just our base family fellowship to providing services to any college youth in need. Um, and we began to address the emergent needs at the time, which are listed there as housing, grocery support, transportation and relocation assistance, utility personal expenses, access to technology and general resources, uh, providing general resources to individuals. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you have dealt with it with the, the similar situations that we're dealing with. Students came to you asking for housing, asking for grocery support. And at that point, everybody was kind of, you know, we, we didn't have an answer for that at the, at the time. So uh, we started a couple of fundraisers. We generated some funds and we were providing direct services all across the country for, these, for um, any youth in foster care. And through partnerships with um, Passports to Careers and, and partnerships with the Stewart Foundation, we're now able to provide a rapid response specifically for the state of Washington. And I'll jump into a little bit more onto what that is entailing. So next slide. All right, and so with our rapid response, this, um, our, we, we, we go, we're labeling them by stages. So stage one was considered our emergency response. 
Stage two, which is what we're currently doing, is, is we're titling our rapid response. And hopefully this stage will be a longer support. And so a supportive service and a network that we can begin to develop that can last for a couple of years post-COVID. We want to think about post-COVID, what are the services that the students will continue to need and what resources can we continue to provide to the youth both in college and hopefully those students that have also exited college and are thinking career choices, what they need to do and how we can prevent that, uh, prevent them from, from uh, falling and failing. So next slide. Our rapid response program is Together We Rise's support initiative for Washington College foster youth. We are committing to provide immediate services for youth within a 24 hour period after the initial referral has been assist, uh, submitted to Together We Rise and assessed. This is uh, an extension of what we've already been doing. Our team was able to provide rapid response to all the individuals. As soon as COVID started, we began to get a lot of inquiries. And since then, we've been able to have a consistent 24 hour turnaround for a lot of these individuals. Uh, some of them are a little extensive and require a little bit more work, but for the most part, there is a 24 hour response to the student's needs. And those, the student needs are met and addressed as rapidly as we can so that we can continue uh, the goal was to get them successfully completing their, their spring semester. And so far we've been able to complete, all of our students have been able to complete the spring semester. And now with this rapid response, we're, we're able to host, uh, we're hoping that we're able to host them and, and, and kind of keep them engaging in college activities and college, uh, that, that college pathway as we begin to assess the situation for the summer, assess the situation for the fall, and really encourage them and continue to go to college and continue that, that experience for them. Next slide. As part of the services that we're offering regarding this rapid response. So we're, these were national surveys that we put out. We've also looked at other services, that, uh, other surveys that were out there. And these were the emergent needs that have come up through a lot of research and a lot of um, attending webinars. Emergency housing. We will provide emergency housing to the youth. Um, anybody that's homeless, anybody that's in, in transitional issues at the moment, um, anybody whose dorm is closed, maybe through the summer and possibly into the fall and they have nowhere to go, we want to provide some emergency support and emergency services for that. Regarding grocery support, um, we are committing to provide gro grocery support directly to the student. This will be provided in the form of a Venmo stipend to the individual so they can go and purchase the groceries, purchase meals, and also purchase any, any personal protective equipment and other essentials that are required for the student to just go through the day to days. Utilities and personal expenses, if there are utilities, we understand a lot of folks have lost jobs. Uh, some individuals had hours cut and are not making the same salary that they were before. So we wanna make sure that we're providing that level support so that the student has utilities, has a telephone to communicate with, has internet, has electricity, running water in their home, and also address any personal expenses that are considered emergencies. Travel and relocation, if the student is requiring travel assistance or relocation assistance, that'll be provided through our program. Healthcare and, med and mental health assistance. Through that, we're not providing the services ourselves. We're asking the student to possibly locate a counselor or a therapist or, or have the funds available to continue um, providing the, the services to the youth, uh, including healthcare if the student does become ill, especially now with COVID, we wanna be very careful with the students becoming ill uh, or, or you know, possibly having difficulties. We wanna make sure that that's dealt with and we wanna provide the funds to, to deal with those situations. Technology and educational expenses. Um, we understand students may need Wi-Fi to continue the classes over the summer. We understand that students need cell phones and, and technology to communicate with social workers, with advocates, with other people that are in their corner. So we wanna make sure that service is provided to the youth. General education expenses, if a student needs a printer, if the student needs anything that, they, that is essential for them to continue with their education, we wanna make sure that that's provided to them. And then at the end, we will be providing general resource lists, um, just lists that we've gathered through, throughout, um, you know, just our research and our, our initiatives that we've responded to. And if there are any further initiatives that do come up, whether they're state or federal, and there's some sort of funding that's provided to the youth, we're hoping to provide them that information, kind of to supplement what everyone else is doing so that the student has the information and that they're able to access that information. Next slide. Mario, we do have three questions that came in. Is this a good time to pause or? Do you want to wait yeah. after? Yeah, okay. Good. So the first question is, does the funding go directly to the agency to give to the youth or will the funding be provided to the youth directly? 
The funding will be provided to the youth, although indirectly. We want to make sure that we can provide the services. So for example, if a student is in need of housing and they need us to pay this month's rent, we want to make sure we have direct access to the landlord, to the leasing office, a, a location where we can make the payment ourselves. Um, in past experiences, we've had issues where we just give the student money and that money does not get used for appropriate reasons. So we want to make sure that, that we are able to make that payment directly. The only funding that the student will get will be a stipend directly to them, and that'll be through Venmo or PayPal. So they'll have access to a limited amount of money that they can use for discretionary spending. But we want to make sure that any additional services provided is somehow provided through us, and we're covering those expenses. So that there's also, you know, providing students a source of income, if you will, and that it possibly gets into financial aid issues and other complications that we're trying to avoid. Thank you. Okay, next question is, uh, would emergency housing include motel and hotels? Yes, they will. Great. And so the strategy with that is to provide them at least a, a 30 day support. And in those 30 days, begin to assess what the long term strategy is going to be for the youth. Um, we want to make sure that the student is housed. That's, that's the number one priority. The student must be housed, must have meals, and must have their basic needs met. But we also want to think big picture. Is the student in this situation because the dorms are closed and they can't return to the dormitories? Um, is this a longer uh, homelessness issue that needs to get addressed? And at that point, we would then reach out to the social worker, the advocates, whoever's referring the individual, so that we can build a structure and build some foundation around the youth and provide that overall success for the youth. Um, mm -hmm. The services could be extended beyond the one month. And at that point, at the 30 day mark, we'll just reassess if the student needs additional funding. Um, the funding is limited, as we've mentioned. So we don't, we, we're expecting to spend as much as we can per student, but at the same time, we want to be mindful that if we're spending a lot on one student, we might not have funding for the rest. So that, that's something that is on our minds and we want to do what's best to juggle and, and definitely take care of the student, but also address the needs of everybody. Great, okay. We do have a few more that just came in. Um, how can we, confirm eligibility to students who are not in passport due to age requirement. Okay. For example, a student um, noted that they are in foster care, but are 20, but they're 28 years old. Yeah, so there is no age restriction for the students. Um, if there's any verification that's needed, um, you could request documentation from the student, but we, there is no age restriction or age qualification. The student will have to be a a college student and will have to at some point have been in foster care. Those are the, the, the two basic requirements if we want to lay that out um, for the, the youth. And then this question is um, if graduating students are eligible for this support and this um, individual has brought up that that's one of the biggest concerns right now for um, I think campus partners that are supporting students who have already graduated and are in this kind of transition phase right of um, transitioning out of housing, campus housing, and not able to find work? And the answer is yes, we will be able to provide supportive services to any college graduates, as well as high school graduates. So if there's a high school student transitioning into college, the student will have to connect with a college campus uh, foster care support group, but we are able to service college graduates as well as high school graduates. Great. And this last question is, it sounds like Together We Rise provides ongoing case management as well as funding. Um, and, right, so that's the question. Is Together We Rise providing on, ongoing case management as well as funding? We will provide funding, the case management. We, we wanna, we're, we're servicing the students, so we wanna know long-term what the strategy is gonna be so that we can best put the, the funding to, to better use. So we do have, we do anticipate doing some case management, but we will work hand in hand with the partnering agency and the referral services so that we can partner together, create a collaborative environment for the youth and provide them a, a long-term strategy. We want to make sure that the student has a long-term plan. So we, we want to step in there and kind of make that assessment. And if we can do it together, um, we'll provide the services, for example, for a month and maybe the following month, we were able to collaboratively provide some services for the youth so they can transition into an apartment or a job or, or whatever their next venture will be. Uh, so we will be working hand in hand with our referral partners to make sure that we're providing some, some services and, and the additional services are being provided for the youth long term. 
All right, thank you. That's all that we have in the queue right now. So I'm gonna go on to the next slide. All right. There we go. All right, so this is a quick workflow of the rapid response 24 hour period. So the referral will come to together rise on that top left blue box. That referral will, re will as soon as that referral is submitted to Together We Rise, there's an automated email that will go out to campus staff and there'll be another email that will be sent out to our students. Uh, the campus staff email will just be confirmation that your referral was submitted and this, the email for the student will have a needs assessment survey. This is the brief survey that we mentioned early on. We want to find out a little bit more information about the youth as well as have them provide us um, information for processing a Venmo or a PayPal. So that, that the survey is pretty basic, it's, it's not too long. Um, and it'll just ask for, for some of the, the basic needs that the student might need, uh, kind of reassuring and, and reconfirming what the referral was saying. After, after that, included in the email, excuse me, there will be a, uh, an area for the student to schedule a phone call with the Together to Rise program coordinator. And that'll let us know tomorrow we have a call with Jimmy, and then we begin assessing the needs and providing the student those direct services. So we're hopeful that this cycle would happen within that 24 hour period. For the most part, like I've mentioned, it has happened with our emergency response as we started off. Um, we've continued now this rapid response for a couple of weeks now, and it's been pretty successful. We have been able to meet that 24 hour response time. Um, we do wanna point out though, that some of the emails to campus staff and to students might go to spam. So please make sure that you notify the student to check their emails, to keep an eye out for emails coming from Together We Rise and to keep an eye on the spam box as well. Sometimes these emails will bounce into spam and then we're maybe a day or two without communicating with the student and the student may be communicating to us like, hey, what's happening? We wanna make sure that that's addressed. So if you don't, if you submitted a referral and this, either the student or campus staff do not receive anything, check your spam box. Next slide. All right, so we're gonna uh, quickly jump through this one. Step one uh, of our referral process, we've already mentioned making sure that you as a, as a campus program are uh, verifying the student and verifying their eligibility. Together We Rise will not verify the student's eligibility. By the time they come to us, we wanna be able to provide the direct service without having to verify any documentation, verifying foster care admittance and whatnot. So we wanna make sure that at this point we're providing that direct service to the youth. Next slide. As part of the referral, we are, uh, this, the following information will be required for you to collect from the student. Uh, we will require the first name and last name for the student, their email address, um, and, and verify that the email address is a correct one. Um, if there are additional emails, maybe the student has two to three emails, there will be a section at the bottom with additional information that you can post that information under. Um, we just wanna make sure that the email is, is communicated to the student um, because we want to make sure that we're also documenting things on our end in terms of what services we're providing, the time. So it'll provide a good time stack for us of, of the services and, and when the communication has happened with the youth. So making sure we have a valid email, making sure we have a valid phone number. If any of those uh, email or phone number are not valid because the student may be lacking access to technology, um, please go ahead and put your information down as the referrer and list it under that comments box that the information listed is for the referrer. That way we'll know on our end to communicate with you and we'll, we'll work hand in hand to try and get the student uh, the services that they need and making sure that we're able to do this as quickly and as efficiently as we can. Uh, next, we are going to be requesting that you document the student state and, and uh, city. So basic information, everybody's in Washington, we just need to know the city. Um, college enrollment status, that's just for us to, to know. We want to know which students are enrolled at what capacity. This isn't a criteria for eligibility. We just want to know what, what their status is um, because there are, there are additional services and additional funds for some of these youth and we want to make sure that us as the service provider can I kind, of, kind of assess that beforehand uh, as we discuss the questions with the student. As part of the referral, there will be a section for you to write down the urgent needs that the student needs and any non-urgent needs that the student is currently in need of. Um, and that section, there's a, there's a pull down and you'll be able to select different options there um, as urgent and non-urgent needs. Again, this will just provide us the information of what to address first and then any secondary needs uh, uh, that are required afterwards. And then lastly, as part of the referral, we also want to track any services that the campus has provided. If the student is receiving any state or campus support services, we want to make sure that that's noted as well. Um, 
because again, we want to, we were trying to provide a whole comprehensive support. So if the student has not been provided any support from the state or any support from the college program, we want to make sure that we're able to offer this to the student or at least begin the discussion as to why the student has to apply for, for said program. Next slide. All right, so our step three um, of part of the referral process, the agency, like I've mentioned, will be receiving a confirmation email. The student will also be receiving a confirmation email. The student confirmation will include a needs assessment and will include a box with an availability to schedule a call with the Together We Rise staff at the student's earliest convenience. And for most cases, those will be done um, almost immediately. So when the email is brought up for the student, they'll have today's schedule for all staff available and they'll be able to select if they want to schedule time today. If maybe they're busy, they want to schedule time for tomorrow or later on in the week, they'll have that flexibility to do so. From there, Together We Rise will address and assess the needs of the student and begin to provide the services almost immediately. As soon as we hang up the phone call, we want to make sure that we have a plan for the student and we'll discuss that with the student. Um, I'll get to it in a little bit, but we want to make sure that we're also communicating to you all as referral programs. So there will be an email that will eventually go out to you as a referrer, kind of giving you a summary of what we spoke about, what the next steps are going to be, and what action items we as Together We Rise will take for the student. That way, again, we're providing that collective and holistic approach for the student's needs and addressing anything that we have. And then lastly, emails may go to spam as a reminder, just make sure you're checking your spam box. Next slide. Mario, before we move on to the next slide, there are two questions about eligibility. If we can pause to just answer those. Um, yeah. The first one is, um, is the funding available to students pursuing vocational training programs, for example, technical college, vocational training, pre-apprenticeship or apprenticeship programs? Yes, it, it is open to anybody, sort of anybody um, attending those kinds of, of post-secondary educational programs. Uh, yes, we're able to service them. No age restrictions um, would not require any um, verification of, of length if they're enrolled full-time, part-time, we'll service them as long as they meet the other eligibility criteria. Great, and then this one kind of, um, it's also about eligibility. Um, are youth who are placed in tribal foster care or federal foster care also eligible for this funding? I think that would be a Don question and I think that might require additional um, discussions. Uh, so let, let's hold off on that one. I think we can address that one either at the end. We do plan to have an FAQ available for this webinar mm -hmm. and we'll be attached to that as well. So we'll address whatever questions we don't answer here will be addressed either through FAQ or directly with uh, the person that made that request. Okay, this is one more um, and I think it's tied in because with the passport eligibility, students aren't able to pursue a theology major. Um, for students who are pursuing theology majors, are they eligible to apply for this funding? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm gonna go to the next slide. All right, next slide discusses our direct services and the services that we're providing. Um, so we've now gotten off the phone call with the student. We now know what the services are. Uh, together we rise, we'll make the request to make payments directly for utility companies, for travel, for housing, healthcare, and educational needs. Um, again, we're trying to avoid giving the money directly to the student. If there's no way around that, if we've exhausted all options and the only method is to give funding to the student, we'll try to be as discretionary as we can to make sure that, that uh, the situation doesn't go awry and the funds are being used for, for the purposes that they're intended for. Uh, there will be a $60 grocery stipend provided to each youth that requests uh, assistance with meals and grocery support. That'll happen on a bi-weekly base, basis, and the funds will be transferred via Venmo or PayPal to each individual. The services that Together We Rise is not able to provide and not able to fund, Together We Rise will not provide any expenses for insurances or will not pay directly for insurances either. The funds are not meant to be used for non-essential expenses, which include leisure, entertainment, vice, gambling. They have to be for emergency purposes. Number three, as mentioned already, Together We Rise will try to provide direct funding for the student for larger amounts. So we, we wanna try to avoid that, but if that's the last scenario, then we'll make that happen. Uh, personal loans and, and personal debts that the student may have, including car payments, student debt, or personal loans. Um, I, I think there may be some flexibility there, but for the most part, we wanna make sure that we're, we, we lay that out. If there are any exceptions, we'll address them internally case by case. 
but we, we're, we're putting this up front that we don't want to, we're not going to be providing services for that. Um, Non-essential medical procedures, including medication. And number six, child care, elderly care, or funding anybody else besides the student. So we don't want to be funding the student's roommate, the student's cousin. We want, we want to make sure that the funds are directly for the student. If the student does have family or friends that are, so that are in need and, and fall in the same criteria, those students can be referred to our program and they'll be receiving services separate and individual. Next slide. All right, so uh, each student will also be receiving a general resource list. Our general resources are some, just some of the basic programs that are provided statewide. Um, and what's really important is we wanna make sure that the student is aware of what they are uh, and how to access them. I know a lot of students already access them and your programs do a great job of mentioning the SNAP programs, uh, unemployment insurances, healthcare insurances. So we wanna make sure that, it, this, this is just a quick reiteration, but what's really important at the bottom, if there are any state or any different government programs that are, you know, that do come up in the next few days, months, weeks, and years. We want to make sure that the students are aware of this information. Um, and for that, we, we request your collaboration as well. If you know of anything that might be beneficial for the youth, any additional services, whether they're government, whether they're state, federal, county, we want to make sure that these services are provided to the youth and they have that general understanding. So please feel free to share any of that information with us so that we're providing that to the youth. And again, it's just a whole comprehensive, holistic approach to the students. Need. Next slide. And so as mentioned, we are gonna be providing a, a lesser level of case management. We wanna be responsible in, in, in thinking long-term of what the student's plans are gonna be. So we've created a case management timeline. Um, this is not meant to supplant any of the work that you are already doing as case managers. We just wanna step in and assist wherever we can. Um, in week one, we're gonna be providing that direct service to the youth. So within that 24 hour period, providing the services and then scheduling follow ups as needed with both referral programs with the student and with anybody, any other advocate that the student has on their team. You want to make sure that everybody is understanding of what we're doing and providing all those services within that first week. The second week, we are planning to schedule a follow up with the youth and include a demographic survey. This is more just for our references so we can collect additional information for the youth. Uh, we're trying to uh, gather additional resources that can provide uh, other resources down the road um, for future grant writing purposes. So that, that'll happen that second week. By the third and the fourth week, we wanna start thinking of what the long-term strategy with the youth is gonna be. Uh, we do have some, some tools that we're gonna put together for addressing that long-term need. I know a lot of students may have expected to graduate this year, maybe in December, maybe next spring. And now because of COVID, there may be some adjustments that have to be made. So we want the, the, the youth to start thinking about that. We want the student to begin to, to assess whether they need to be making any changes or any adjustments in their school schedule so that they're, they remain on track and they're consistently focusing on that next strategy and, and what that'll look like. And after our week four assessment, we will schedule a 15 week follow-up just to make sure by that point, hopefully all the, the student services have been dealt with, everything has been addressed and we'll continue to provide services as needed beyond that week 15, excuse me, to be beyond that week four, and we'll provide that three month follow up with the youth as, as the days and weeks come on. If anything does come up between now and then, we'll be available to continue supporting the youth. Um, and if the student in, in the, those four weeks is, has all their needs taken care of and everything is, is great and they're not transitioning to something else, then we will just schedule a 15 week follow up at that point, um, the student will be doing whatever they want to do it and continuing their their education as such and so next slide we have one question about student engagement um how involved does uh, the student need to be and what happens if the young person stops responding or following up with together with your staff um, we want the student to at least be engaged for those two weeks we want to make sure that number one services are met and we're thinking of that long-term strategy. We wanna make sure that the student has a long-term vision. What we don't want is for us to provide housing for the next month and then nothing happens, the student ends up becoming homeless again at the end of the month and we're back to square one. So if at, at a point the student is not responding to us, we'll reach out to the referral agency um, and maybe we can, we, we'll try to identify what's happening with the student. If at that point the student, if the student at any point refuses service, we, we, don't, we don't continue servicing the youth. Um, but we will remain open to servicing the youth maybe a couple of weeks or a couple of months down the road if, if that's the case. 
So we'll work with the referring agency to make sure that if the youth wants to participate and do they want to continue receiving services that that's provided. If uh, communication falls through, we'll reach out to the referring agency to see if, if maybe they have additional information that we don't have. And we'll try to do the best that we can to assess the situation. Um, but if, if the student is not responsive and we've, we've, do, we've done everything, we've done our due diligence to see what has happened and nothing has transpired, um, at that point, we will put a pause on the student's case and we'll continue to service the additional. Thank you. All right, so with our teamwork and collaboration, um, again, we wanna make sure that we're all providing a collaborative effort here. Um, Together We Rise will be submitting information to you all as, refer as referring agencies on a weekly and monthly basis. So if you do request any additional information for the youth, feel free to include that in the emails that you'll be receiving from our team. Just make sure that you're asking the question, staff will review it and we'll provide a response as quickly as we can. At the end of the month, you will be receiving a list of all the students that were referred from your agency. And we wanna make sure that, that that'll just be a general list, but if you want in detail and, and additional supportive information for you, uh, make sure that that's requested in the email so that we can gather that and present that to you. And then lastly, Together We Rise intends to support case management duties performed by current campus and nonprofit organizations. Our intent is not to supplant or replace any of your referral agency services or any of the state or government services. This is in addition to what's already being provided to the youth. We wanna make sure that that's clear. We don't, we don't wanna step on anybody's toes. We wanna to make sure that this is a collaborative effort for the youth and that we're providing a whole comprehensive solution to them. And so lastly is uh, our general contact information. If you all have any questions regarding this uh, rapid response program, as campus staff, I will ask you to contact myself, Mara Gonzalez. My email is there, mg at togetherwerise.org. And then if, you, if the students have questions specifically about maybe their eligibility, their continued service, they can email Alondra or Melissa and either one of them will respond to them. We also have a text line. If there are any urgent needs, they can text that number and they'll be receiving a response um, as quickly as possible with additional information on what to do and how to assess. And there at the bottom, if you all have general questions about Together We Rise, about the services we provide and what we do generally, feel free to uh, email info at togetherwerise.org and someone will respond to you with, uh, within a couple of minutes, days, <laughs> however long that takes. And so we have reached the end of our presentation. Um, I'll pass it back to Don. If there are any questions uh, or comments, feel free to write them down in the question and answer box. Thank you. All right, everyone, thanks um, so much for joining us. Uh, I just wanted to make clear again that this is not considered a financial aid program for students. So this is something that's outside of the financial aid realm. Um, and then I did want to follow up. We'll talk to um, Mario and I will touch base about the students who are um, in tribal foster care or experiencing federal foster care. And, and, and we'll get a message out to you guys and let you know whether or not they are eligible for the services. Um, other than that, I think we're done. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, I'm happy to help. And uh, let's get started. Thanks a lot, everyone. Great. I don't see any questions in the queue. So I think that concludes this informational webinar. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. And we'll keep, uh, we'll post all the materials on the Washington Passport Network website later this week. Thanks for joining us. Take care, everyone.